Good morning, lovely 12s. Right, buddies. Um, today, we get to start doing one of my very favorite topics of the whole year. I love, love, love it when I get to teach this trig stuff. Um, and I'm going to give you a method that I use for absolutely everything and that I think you guys are going to completely come on board with me and love this method as well. So in your books, the title for today's lesson is the cast method. So please put that title in your books. Now, the work that we're going to do today is actually going to require the cast method, but later on, if you don't like this method, there are alternate ways of doing trig stuff without the cast method, but I think this is the easiest, and I'm going to do everything I can to completely convert everyone over to my way. So here we go. Okay. Um, to start with, buddies, if you check it out, what I've done here is I've just used autograph to draw really, really accurate, like perfectly accurate trig functions. So I've got, I think I do need to zoom out actually, I've got here um, a graph of sine x, here's a graph of cosine of x, and then here's your graph of tan of x. Now, um, there's kind of something neat with these. You remember how I said last time that exciting things happen in trig every 90 degrees? Well, I'm just going to show you something cool. So actually, if you want to make full notes, I would pause the video and sketch this. The notes aren't super duper important, but if you are interested in wanting to follow along, I'd pause now and sketch these three graphs. Um, it's just 90, 180, 270, 360. And if you just want to listen, that's cool too. So here we go. Um, cool things happen at 90 degrees, buddies. So here's what I'm just going to do. I'm going to grab these lines and I'm going to bring them to the front, okay? So I've, bought a, I've got a line that goes down and cuts through zero on the x-axis. This one here then, um, bring to front. This one here then, it's um, cutting down the 90 degrees. This one here, here, and here are all going to be cutting down at the um, 90 degrees. So there you go. So all I've done is I've chopped these things off. It's like I've drawn bars through all of the graphs, but they're all kind of in sync with each other. Cool. Now, here's what I'm going to show you as well, my buddies. I'm going to be trying to make these three trig graphs, which are just like graphs in a normal sense, with an x-axis, with a y-axis, and I'm going to try to make them into like a circle, if that makes sense. I'm going to be trying to make them so that they represent actually like turning. Now, here's how that works, and you do have to know how this works, so it's kind of neat, this. Um, here's what you can do. Just draw me just a little set of axes, just like that. You will have to draw this whether or not you're taking full notes. Now, here's the thing. Mathematicians always start at the positive x-axis at zero degrees, okay? So if you start at the, the x-axis, that counts as zero degrees with regards to an angle. Now, if you're starting here at an angle, you're going to start turning anti-clockwise. You go always this way, too. This is just a mathematical convention, which means this is just how... Um, things are done in math. That's just how it was decided. We start at zero degrees here at the x-axis. By the time we've turned around and hit the y-axis, how many degrees have we spun through? Well, that's right, 90 degrees. Cool? If we keep spinning, how many degrees will we be at by the time we hit the x-axis again, by the time we're turned right around? Well, 180 degrees. You're dead right. And if you keep going all the way around like this, uh, you're going to get all the way to here, which is 270 degrees, and then finally by the time you get back to zero, how many degrees are you at? Well, that's right, 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is the same as zero on my picture. It is exactly identical, which you might be thinking, oh, that's all well and good. Of course, zero degrees is the same as 360, because if you're pointed one way, pointing in one direction, and you spun 360 degrees, you'd be pointing at the same direction. So in real life, that seems to work. Now, that's not only just in real life that that works, but look at our graphs again, buddies. Can you see that they start at zero, sine does its whole thing, and then what would happen from here? Well, yeah, it would do another thing, right? It repeats its cycle, and then 360's happened again. Then it repeats its cycle, and 360 happens again. Same deal on coast, 360 degrees for a full repetition. So this is why you get this expected behavior that the, that zero is the same as 360 because it's as though you've not turned at all and it actually confirms with the graph. Tan actually you get two of them in the 360 range but let's not talk about it because it's going to make it a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. Okay so there you go. I'm going to just erase my arrows off but I am going to keep oops the numbering the 360 degrees. Okay so here's what I'm going to get us to look at. 
First things first is if you check it out, this little section of graph here, from there to there, is from 0 degrees to 90 degrees, right? Well, what do you notice about the sine of, oh, the sine of sine, oh great. What do you notice about whether it's plus or minus the sine graph um, between 0 and 90? Is it above the x-axis or below? Well, it's above. Here, sine is positive. What about cos in between this little, the two first two black bars? Well, it's positive as well because it's still above the axis. Whilst it is going down, it's still positive. It is still in the positive. Now, what about 10? What do you notice about it between 0 and 90? Well, still above the axis. It's still positive too. So in other words, 0 to 90, which is here to here, left to right, or it's from here to there on our spinning picture, on our like turning picture, if you think about it as turning around, um, all three of the trig ratios are positive in that range. So we're going to pop an A in there to show that all of the trig ratios are positive. Cool? Now here's what kind of something cool that happens next. This part here, the next little set of bars that I put on there, are the bars that go between 90 and 180 degrees, okay? Um, it goes between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So that's this section, 90 to 180, the second quadrant. Now here's what you're going to check. In this part here, um, what's the sign of each of the graphs? Well, sine is still above the axis. Sine is still positive. But cos isn't. Cos is below the x-axis. It's negative. And so is tan. It's under the x-axis. It's negative as well. So in this section here, what is the one that's positive? Well, it's only sine. Put an s there. Cool? We're going to go again now. Between 90, or sorry, between 180 and 270, which is this third quadrant, is what you call that. That's the third quadrant. Well, if you check it out, from there to there is what matches up with the third quadrant. Now, between 180 and 270, well, sine's actually negative this time. Cos is also negative. You can see that too. It's under the axis. But tan is actually positive. Tan has popped up. Tan's above the axis. Um, the axis. So that means that the one that's positive is tan. You put a T here. Cool. And the final thing, the final one that we're going to look at together, um, is just going to be this last one, between 270 and 360, because we know we don't have to check further, because it repeats after that. Um, so after, the, in this last little section, between 270 and 360, between 270 and 360, um, well, what do you spot? Well, sine's negative, cos is positive, and tan is negative, hopefully, you see, which means the only one that's positive is cos. And guess what, buddies? That's it. This is the cast method. Check it out. People say it like this, C-A-S-T, starting in the fourth quadrant, going backwards. That's where cast comes from. Cast. Cast. Now, I often say it a different way, and I don't know why. It was because my math teacher said, well, I do know why, because my math teacher said this when I was in school. Instead of thinking cast, which is hard to think about because it starts in the bottom right corner, um, you can also start as you'd read, and it's S-A-T-C. And I remember that as sex and the city, because I suppose my math teacher would have been into that when I was in school. And so sex and the city, I call it sex and the city quite often. And it just tells you where the graphs are positive, okay? It tells you where, um, it tells you where each ratio is positive. Now, I know that's a lot to get your head around, but now that you've got your head around it, um, we'll kind of get S, sex and the city anyway, we're going to be able to do lots of awesome stuff with this, so it was worth the explanation because check this out. Um, question four says, express in terms of trigon trigonometric ratios of acute angles. So what it says is we just don't want to have sine of an obtuse angle, a negative obtuse angle. We don't want to have cos of a reflex angle, and we don't want to have tan of an enormous angle that's bigger than 360. Okay? We want these to be trig ratios of acute angles. Well, check it out, buddies. You are going to be so sick at this because you know this. You know, you can just jot one of these bad boys down, and you can say to yourself, sex and the city. Cool? Or cast, as everyone else will say, cast. Cool? Sex and the city. Now, here's what we're going to do. Check it out. Get these as an acute angle. All you're going to do is this. For each one, you're going to draw your own little cast graph, but you're not going to put the letters in it straight away. So here's what we are going to do. You're going to smack this bad boy down like that, bang, get your little graph going, 
And can you see that the neg the um the hundred degrees, the negative one hundred degrees is negative? Okay. Now I'm just going to write on this really quick. You guys remember when I said mathematicians always start at the x-axis and they go around like this. So this would be positive ninety, one eighty, two seventy, three sixty, 360, back to where we were. Cool. Then if you went further, it'd be like four hundred and fifty and then whatever 90 more than that is, and whatever 90 more than that is, and then 720. See what I mean? It keeps getting back to normal. But anyway, uh, here's how we draw the negative 100. The positive way is anti-clockwise, which means that the negative way is clockwise. So we'll start at the x-axis, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to negative 100 degrees. So going the wrong way. Well, 90 would be to there, and then negative 100 would be like something in there. So all you need to do is this. Draw a stick into that quadrant, okay? Because you've identified that the angle that we want, the negative 100 degrees, is there. Cool? Now here's your first ever time using cast. Here's what you do, buddies. What you're going to do is you're going to start by drawing this. You don't even need to draw the blue part in that I did. You just whack a stick into this quadrant because that's where, where you said that um, we ended up. And what you always do is then you just drop a dashy line to the x-axis, like this. And you say to yourself, if I've dropped my dashy line to the x-axis like that, um, what angle is left for here? Um, now, I know it says 100 degrees, but how many degrees would be left then to get to here if you kept spinning? Well, if that's 100 here, I'm going to write it better, bigger and better. If that's 100 degrees there, 100 in the wrong way, but it is still 100 means there's 80 degrees left for here, okay? Cool beans, my buddies. So sine of minus 100, my buddies, is going to be, yeah, check it out. That, that's what we've got. We got that as a picture. I hope that's okay. Is it okay? Good. Next step. Sex and the city. Okay. Now, here's what you're going to do then. Now we start from the x-axis, because we want these to be um, acute angles, and you're going to say this. It used to be sine of ho minus 100. Now it's going to be this. Now it's going to be sine, and it's going to be of 80. Okay? So sine of minus 100 is actually going to be the same as sine of 80. Okay? So because the 80 was on the inside, we've ditched off the 100, we've gone with the 80. The final step you've got to do is then you check the quadrant, and it's in the T quadrant. Now, S stands for where sine is positive, A stands for where all of them are positive, T stands for where tan is positive, and C stands for where cos is positive. Now, we're dealing in sine, and we're in the T quadrant. So, is sine positive in the T quadrant? No. Sine isn't positive in the T quadrant, which means we have to put a negative in there, to say that we're in the wrong quadrant, and this should be the final answer, okay? That is sine of minus 100 expressed as sine of an acute angle. So let's just check it. Here's how you check it in your calculator. Um, just put it in the calculator just as you see it, okay? So if you type sine of open bracket minus 100, close bracket, I've got an answer. I am in degrees. Uh, yeah, I am in degrees. So I got an answer of minus 0.98. So this equaled minus 0.98. And if we've done this right, this one should also equal minus 0.98. Let's see. Put in negative sine of regular old 80. And by God, negative 0.98. Okay? So here's what you've done. You've switched a trig ratio, which was an obtuse angle. And not only that, it was a negative obtuse angle into a different trig ratio, which has the same value, but is positive. Now this is going to be super helpful in the future, and it's going to blow your mind. Um, it's a bit to get your head around, so I'm going to go slow. We're supposed to do a whole bunch of stuff this lesson. We're not going to do loads, because it's really important to me that you get this right. Cool? So that's worked. Here's what I think you should do. I think probably, um, yeah, I think probably we'll do this one together, but I'll tell you to pause midway after I start you, and we'll see how you get on. Cool. So let's do B. Okay, B. For B, it wants us to express cos of 330 as a different angle. Well, I'm going to start you off. First things first is I want you just to think about, let's label it even, sex and the city. Just get those on there. And the angle it's on about is cos of 330 degrees. 
Okay, bearing in mind that we start at the positive x-axis, where is 330 degrees? Draw a stick in that quadrant, go. Okay, and the stick you should have drawn is this, 90, 180, 270, 360, it's in this last quadrant. Okay, it should have been there because the 330 degrees is actually from there all the way around to that. Cool? Which means what's the acute angle to finish it out? What's the final little acute angle in there? What'd you get? Well, 30 degrees, that's right. Okay? Final step, what do you do? Well, that's right, you drop a horizontal stick into this quadrant like an absolute beast. So happy days. Cool. That means we're ready for our final answer now. We know then that cos of 330 degrees is going to equal to, and um, it's going to be, again, just keep the cos, it's going to be cos of 30. Now you just need to determine, my buddies, what's the sign going to be? Well, we're in the C quadrant. That's the quadrant where cos is positive. Are we dealing with cos? Yes. So this should just be equal to positive cos of 330 as your final answer, because it was in the C quadrant, and we are dealing with C, we are dealing with cos, so it should be positive. Real quick check in your calculator. Cos of 330, I got that that equals not 0.87. Cool, um, let's go cos of 30, and by God, not 0.87, it's worked. So our strategy is working here. Cool, final one we're gonna do together, and then I'm gonna get you guys to practice some and then come back. C. We're going to do this, 10 of 500. Now, this one's a bit wonky, okay? You have to draw a picture for each one as well. So, unfortunately, you got to draw a picture for each one. Sex and the city, or cast. And here we go. Um, with 10 of 500, first things first, 500 degrees is going to be like this, starting here all the way around to 360. But then how many more? Well... 500 take 360 equals 140 degrees. So you need another 140 degrees to get all the way to like there. Cool? Now, in my head, I think that's a bit of a palava, but that is right. So you're going to end up here. That's where your stick's going to be. Um, if it was me, you know what I'd do straight away? Instead of considering it like a big spiral, what I would say is it takes 360 to repeat. So straight away, tan, or yeah, so tan of 500, you can just take away periods off of it. This is going to be take away 360 from it because that's a full circle, right? So 500 take 360. Instantly, 10 of 500 is going to be the same as 10 of 140, okay? Because it's gone around, so it's done extra. So that's the first step I'd do. Next step then is if this is 140, um, then that's 140. And now I'm going to pause. You finish it. Go. And I hope that now that you've finished it, you've got this. So the inside one's going to be 40 to get all the way to 180. So the acute angle is 40. Drop a horizontal line down to the x-axis. Always the x-axis, never the y. Um, which means that we're in the s quadrant. So tan of 140, here we go. First things first, tan is not positive there. This is the quadrant where sine is positive. So we're dealing with tan, not sine. So this is negative to begin with, negative. Now, now that it's negative, what you're going to do is you're just going to write down negative tan of 40. Were you to check that into your calculator, you would have the answer right. So here's what I'm going to get you to do. Final step is this. Um, have a little go at those. Um, pause, have a go. Spend maybe like 10 minutes on that, okay? So the lesson's not over yet, though, so we're going to keep going after this. So pause, spend 10 minutes, go. And I hope that that was sufficient practice for you. Now, the cast thing goes a little bit more um, tricky, and this is the final thing we're going to do today. It says that given, th these are harder ones, these are the ones you can actually come up with exact values. This is where cast is absolutely necessary, because you can sometimes avoid cast, but, which I love cast, so I wouldn't want to avoid it anyway, but you can sometimes avoid it. These are where it's absolutely necessary. And it says, given that cos of theta is minus three-fifths and that theta is reflex, so here we go, um, cos of theta is minus three-fifths and theta is reflex. Um, find the value of sine of theta. And it didn't say the word exact, but you should always be after exact. Okay, so here we go for A. 
First step in all these questions, cast diagram. So let's go. Here we go. Sex and the city. Okay. Now, it says that theta is reflex. Reflex means that an angle is bigger than 180 degrees. So it could either be in T or C. So we have two options. It could be here or it could be here because reflex means it's more than 180. And don't forget that that's 180, that's 90, that's 270, and that's 0, okay, and 360. Okay, now if it's reflex, it's in the bottom half. So we don't know which one's which. So it could be here in the 10 or here. So our stick could be there or our stick could be there. We just don't know where. So here's what we got to do then, buddies. We have to determine which one. Well, you look at the sign, my folks. Can you see that cos of theta is minus 3 fifths? Cos is positive in the bottom right quadrant because C means that's where cos is positive. That means it has to be negative. It's in the T quadrant. You whack your stick into the T quadrant. And there you have it. This is going to be enough to solve. Whack your stick into there. Dash, 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 on up. That means your theta is actually this theta here, the acute theta. Cool? Now, cos, it says, is minus 3 fifths, which means it's, it's so katoa, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to have 3 and 5. But this 3 is negative 3 because it's left of the axis, right? Just like a regular number. It's on the left-hand side, so it's negative, so it's minus 3 fifths. Um, because the hypotenuse always is going to be coming from Pythagoras' theorem. It's always positive, okay? So the hypotenuse is always positive. Cool. Um, now guess what? We'll be able to find sine of it now, because sine then of theta is going to be opposite, which is over here, like so Sokoto, right? That's opposite. Oops, I don't want green, actually. I want a different color. This is going to be opposite. That's going to be hypotenuse. That's going to be adjacent, right? Well, if we can know what the opposite is, we can get what sine is. So first things first, we're going to get the opposite. Okay? Now, if you want to get opposite, it's going to just be Pythagoras' theorem, right? Because it's a right angle triangle. That's the beauty of it. So here we go. It's just going to be this. It's going to be, I'm going to call it, oh, let's call it x. I'm going to call it x squared. Um, Ooh, let's do it properly. I'm going to call it 5 squared equals x squared um, plus minus 3 squared. So just like Pythagoras' theorem. And you should get, after some fiddling, that x equals 4. Okay? Should have got that x equals 4. It is a 3, 4, 5 triangle as well. So x equals 4. Um, now it's below the axis, so it's not just 4. It's actually minus 4 because it's lower than the axis, okay? And guess what? That's the answer. We can now answer the whole question. So um, here you go. So the question was, find the value of sine of theta. Well, it's this. Sine of theta is just going to be opposite over hypotenuse because it's so katoa. Opposites minus 4. Hypotenuse is 5. And there you go. So if you, yeah, so that's brilliant. That's the answer. Cool beans, buddies? Bit tricky, but not too bad. If you're feeling confident, you guys can do B now. If you're not feeling confident, I'll do it with you in a moment. If you're feeling confident, try. Go. Okay, not confident ones. Let's try now too. So here's B. Um, B says it wants sine. It tells us that sine of theta is positive two fifths. So the sine does make a big difference, as you've seen. Um, theta is obtuse, which means that theta is between 90 and 180. Um, and we want to find the value of cos of theta. So here's what you do. Like the last one, socket, or, um, not Sakatoa, what am I trying to say? Cast. So there's sex in the city. Sex and the city. Um, sine is positive, which means it could be this or it could be this, okay? So those are our two things because it says sine of theta is a positive number. It's positive two-fifths. It could be there or there. So if it's obtuse, it's here and not there. See what I mean? It's not here because that would be an acute angle between 0 and 90. If it's obtuse, it lives in this section. Cool. Next step you should have done is drop your horizontal down like that. Drop your, um, drop your like, height down to the horizontal. Um, it's, uh, the next thing then is uh, you can put your little theta in there. You always want to use the acute theta. And the acute theta, sine of it is 2 fifths. Opposite is 2. Um, hypotenuse is 5. We want to know what cos is. We need to know what the adjacent is, but we don't know it yet. So let's get that. Let, and let's actually calculate it. So we're going to get the adjacent. Well, how are you going to do it? 
with Pythagoras' theorem. 5 squared equals x squared plus 2 squared. 25 equals x squared plus 4, which means that x squared equals 21, which means x is just going to equal the square root of 21. Okay? So we're going to have the x is the square root of 21. Now, if x is the square root of 21, that means this is the square root of the 21. And do I want it to be plus or minus the, the root 21? Is it a positive root 21 or a negative? Well, left of the axis, it's negative. Cool? Ready then for your final answer? Should have got this. You'll have got, my buddies, that cos of, th of theta. It's actually alpha. Oops. Cos of theta, I'm just going to keep it theta, is equal to adjacent, which is minus root 21, over hypotenuse, which is 5 for your final answer, buddies. And that is it. Now, that's a brand new skill which you've never seen before in your life. I hope you've had your head around it. It is just a matter of practice. We're supposed to do more of this lesson than this. But again, I think I appreciate that this is quite tricky. So I want you just to do this. Page 212, questions 6 through 9, then 11 and 12. I want you to aim to finish them all, okay? So this has been a long video, but I do want you to try to get as many of them done as you can. Certainly 6 through 9. Okay, because you have to have your head around it really well before, before a couple more lessons. Um, yep, so please ask me questions in the chat. I think that it's a tricky topic, but I think you'll get your head around it, and it leads to something amazing really soon. Um, so that's it from me, my buddies. Have a really, really good day. Submit that work when you're all done, and see you later. Bye, lovelies!